G'day guys and gal, it's no secret that I have a crush on loyalist space marines from Trader Legions, Astartes who resisted the sheep-like tendencies of their brother space marines and defied their daddies in order to do what was right. These space marines are often of greater will and character than even the Astartes from loyalist legions, as it's easy to follow the emperor when your dad is also doing it. But to tell your dad to suck eggs and accept what will probably end in a painful death is some Sigma-based Alpha Chad vibes. Warsmith Barbaros Dantioch is a chief example of this, a man who for a second didn't question his loyalty before single-handedly then clapping an entire Iron Warrior army and then going on to save the lives of both the Lion, Gilliman and Alexis Pollux, three key characters that without, the Imperium would be kind of doomed. That is worth talking about. Before we get started, I'm happy to announce the latest and greatest major mini, the Son of Iron. This absolute chat is old, tired and ready to fuck coming with a big ass hammer, pistol and a can-do attitude. He would make a great addition to any iron army or could be the start of a new one. If he isn't quite your style, cause you know, you have no taste, then the Major Minis website has dozens of other models produced by me, including the Xenonids, Ra, Kitten, Galactic Shark Marines, King Orc, Lord of the Night, Orc Demon Killer, Cetron the Undying, and many, many more. Definitely worth checking out if you wanted to spice things up. Today we'll go over the life, heroics, and death of everybody's favorite Iron Warrior to give the man the respect he deserves. Uh, let's get into it. The Iron Warriors were a bunch of tough, competent bastards, as a result of their extremely harsh Primarch Perturabo, who drove them to heights of tactical brilliance and resilience far above most other legions. None embodies this unbreakability more than Barbaros Dantioch. He was the chosen son of Perturabo and his greatest warsmith, leading the 51st Expeditionary Fleet. He was tasked with engaging and battling a huge Harad infestation, killing them at all costs. A war that killed half of his grand company as the Harad Rudd's ability to rapidly age Astartes into withered old men and then tear them apart was kind of overpowered. Barabas himself was aged around 3,000 years and took on a weathered appearance as well as developing a nasty cough. The Harad were beaten at huge cost. However, Barabas had noticed something. It seems as if their big migration that caused so much damage were the direct result of the Iron Warriors attempting to genocide them. Hence, if they just left them alone or quarantined their sector of space, they wouldn't be an issue. Barabas was like to Perti, Oi, Dad, fucking, that was a shit idea. You fucked us. And Purdy was like, you little shit. Hence, Barabas was stripped of rank, honor, and the Terminator plate made for him to be exiled to a backwater world called Lesser Damantine, a world he was ordered to make compliant and then live out his days there. Barabas took a few dozen Iron Warriors with him and did as he was asked. But boy, our Dantioch doesn't do things in halves. After making the world compliant, the Mad Lad made the most fuck off overpowered unbreakable fortress ever. It was called the Schadenhold, and holy shit, it was like this upside down fortress thing or deep in an underground cave. It had countless kill zones, choke points, and automated defenses. The beast even created hundreds of large brutish clones of himself to garrison it. It was the most overkill thing ever, however, it turned out to be a massive asset as when the heresy broke out, Warsmith Crendel and demanded he resupply them and then join the traitor forces. Barabas wasn't a traitorous piece of shit though, and an ultramarine emissary had come to Dantioch prior to inform him of the heresy, so he kindly told Crendel to eat a fat one and fuck off out of his fortress. He could have just riddled him with bullets then and there, but iron warriors are generally considered to be quite honorable, and since Barabas is the most iron of all iron warriors, it makes sense that he would allow this honor to his enemy. Crendel acted like a mustache twirling villain and promised he would tear this fortress to the ground. Ooh, buddy, was he in for a treat. Crendel had thousands of iron warriors, millions of mortal infantry, countless artillery and armored vehicles, aircraft, and even titans. Dantioch had a few dozen iron warriors, a small garrison of militia, and a bunch of his brute clones. To say he was outnumbered a thousand to one would be a bit of an understatement. And guess what? For over a year, Dantioch bled the traitors, killing hundreds of enemy iron warriors, thousands of troops and hundreds of pieces of armor, even taking down a few titans. Every meter of ground the traders gained was measured in the thousands of liters of their blood. Dantioch was the true master of siege. It was only when the enemy brought forth a Nurgalite corrupted Imperata Titan did the fortress finally get breached. 
but this was just as planned. Dantioch wasn't an idiot. He wouldn't just go down with his ship for no reason. Hence, he guided his few surviving Iron Warriors and the Ultramarine to a teleportation chamber. He then detonated thousands of explosives across the entire fortress that wiped out thousands of Iron Warriors and took out the Imperator Titan. It also fucked up Krendel pretty badly. As it blew up, Barbaros and his crew teleported onto the enemy Iron Warriors flagship, called the killed the small amount of traders on board and then took control of it. I don't think there has ever been such a crushing victory against all odds in the history of 40k. Dantioch and friends then attempted to travel to Terra to aid in the fortifications of the Imperial Palace. However, the ruin storm had cut them off and instead they ended up in Ultramar. Gilliman was happy to see them as he knew of Dantioch's brilliance and he got the report of what happened with the siege from his Ultramarine emissary that was with the Warsmith. Dantioch believed that he could help fortify McCrag. However, G-Man was like, yo dude, check out this hectic Xeno device. And Dantioch was like, sick. See, on the fringe of Ultramar, there was a world called Sotha that contained the Pharos device, an alien device that acted as a mini Astronomicon, a lighthouse in the warp. Dantioch was tasked with uncovering how to use it and to protect it. Dantioch quickly figured it out and was able to light up McCrag like a beacon, resulting in many of the scattered survivors of Istvan, Alexis Pollux's retribution fleet, the Blood Angels and the Dark Angels all getting through the warp storm and arriving at McCrag. When Alexis met Dantioch, he was hostile to him due to his intense racism towards Iron Warriors. However, little did they know that their initial hostility would result in the greatest bromance in all of 40k. See, as Dantioch and Pollux worked together, they gained a mutual respect, realizing that there was actually very little difference between the Iron Warriors and Imperial Fists, and that by working together, they were unbeatable, as they complemented each other's skill sets so well. This friendship went even further when Pollux was ambushed by Conrad Curse. However, Dantioch was able to use the power of the Forest device to detect Conrad and warn Pollux of his attacks. He was able to do this live from many worlds away, showing just how powerful the Forest device was. Then he used it to teleport Pollux to safety, saving his life. He would repeat this teleportation trick to save both the Lion and Gilliman from a trap laid by Conrad, making Dantioch solely responsible for us both having the Lion and Gilliman as table top models right now. Fuck yes. Dantioch and Pollux would become more than friends. They were brothers. However, a splinter fleet of the Night Lords who had fled the Wrath of the Dark Angels discovered Sotha and realized that if they captured the Forest device, they could use it to find their lost flagship as well as their Primarch. Hence, they attacked. The world wasn't super fortified, as the Loyalists wanted to keep it a secret. If they put a huge garrison on it, it would make it seem like an attractive target. The Night Lords only found out about it by chance. Alexis and a small garrison fought hard and well, but were cut down, with Alexis himself getting captured and tortured for information, and also for Dantioch to give up the forest device and let them have it. But Dantioch literally always has an ace up his sleeve. He overloaded the forest device while giving it specific final commands. Its eruption annihilated the Night Lords and prevented them from using it. Alexis was spared due to Dantioch's specific final commands, and even Dantioch himself survived, at least initially. However, the blast was still a massive kick to the balls, a ball kick that Pollux survived since he is like the size of a fucking Primarch, whilst Dantioch is a 3,000 year old crippled man with a bad cough. Alexis runs to Dantioch and scoops his fallen brother in his arms. The explosion had knocked off Dantioch face mask he always wore, and Pollux was shocked to see just how old Dantioch was. It was pretty emotional. Pollux cradles Dantioch, commanding him to live, as Dantioch thanks Pollux for being a good friend and a great brother. You gotta remember that Dantioch was the ultimate traitor. His legion had betrayed the Emperor, and he had betrayed his legion. He was alone and hated by most on both sides. But Pollux had been there with him to the bitter end. Dantioch died with a smile on his face, his final words being, All hail the Emperor of Mankind, beloved by all, may his dreams be saved, even if we cannot. Now Space Marines don't cry, but Pollux begun to cry. He was a lot more human than most other Astartes, and the grief of this loss was too much for him. He would sit there unmoving, Dantioch in his arms. Even when reinforcements arrived led by Gilliman, Pollux was still cradling Dantioch denying all help. Only the direct order from Gilliman for Pollux to stand 
finally broke him out of his grief-stricken trance. Pollux still insisted on carrying Dantioch's body, as they gave the warsmith a funeral for kings. Thus ends the tale of warsmith Barbaros Dantioch. However, Dantioch's legacy would live on. Gilliman was very public about Dantioch's sacrifice, hence his name and deeds became known. He was called the Warden of the Pharos and Hero of the Imperium by G-Man himself, and his mask would remain on the mountain that held the Pharos device. When the scythes of the Emperor were created, the mask was used as a badge of office between them, as they continued continued to protect Sothar, the world Dantioch gave his life to secure. In the modern setting, when the Tyranids came to Sothar and wiped the world clean, killing the chapter master of the size of the Emperor, the mask was burnt on his funeral pyre. Since Sothar had fallen, the role of Warden of the Pharos had become redundant. Dantioch's name is no longer remembered, however the site of his funeral pyre on Sotha still exists, and is said to be the resting place of a traitor redeemed. The scythes of the Emperor often think about this unknown warrior, wondering if he would be proud of them. Fuck, why am I getting emotional? <laughs> Unfortunately, that wouldn't be the only legacy Dantioch would leave behind. The overloading of the forest device caused it to light up like a mega beacon across the warp and space, alerting the Tyranids to the existence of sentient life within the Milky Way. Hence, the actions of Dantioch directly led to the Tyranids' invasion and Sothar's eventual demise. But like, who the fuck could have known that was going to happen, so we'll give him a pass. Dantioch is one of the most badass, well-written, and enjoyable characters in the entirety of 40k, and I'm honored to finally give him his own video. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up the Son of Iron, or any other major mini for that matter. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more Iron content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.